and we're very glad to have, uh, I'm glad to have Hanuman Moon, Moon at Stanford this year, uh, but we're glad to have him visiting from Fordham to the seminar, uh, currently on sabbatical at Stanford, and he's going to tell us about the derived category of moduli of vector vectors. All right, thank you, Ravi. Uh, thank you for the invitation. And I'm very happy to give a talk and thank you for coming to this seminar. Um, today, uh, the topic is the derived category of moduli spaces of vector bundles. Uh, and that there are two major reasons why I choose this topic for uh, this seminar talk. One reason is very recently, you know, there have been very uh, big progress along this direction. So I really want to introduce it. The second reason is my collaborator, Kyung Sung Lee, and uh, everything would be based on the collaboration with him. He is on the job market this year. Okay, um, all right. So then let me uh, start with some background. So the, everything I'm gonna talk about is over complex number for simplicity, but it would be could be generalized to um, other algebraic closed field as well. So X would be always smooth uh, projective curve, genus is n list two, and we are going to fix uh, fix a line bundle of degree D on it, and R is a positive integer n list two. Probably. <laughs> The moduli space of vector bundles on a curve is probably the, the most intensively studied moduli space in algebraic, algebraic geometry history. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that uh, many part, uh, and most of my talk would be very classical in the sense of La Vie, in the sense that uh, many the theory was developed before you got your PhD. But anyway, so uh, this moduli space is the moduli space of vector bundles with length R and uh, with fixed determinant, which is L. So the degree is L, degree is D, uh, stable uh, vector bundles of X. And then we know that many of geometric and topological properties of this moduli space has been very well known. In particular, when rank and degree are co-prime, the situation is particularly nice. For instance, this moduli space is a smooth projective uh, variety of dimension R square minus one times G minus one. And the Picard group Picard rank is one and the Picard group is generated by the generalized theta divisor and it is a final variety of index two. And, and many topological invariants are already calculated. The Betty number, Fenkari polynomial, Hatch number and cohomology ring structure and by the work of Hard, Narashima, Atiyabad, Cohen, etc., topological invariants are very well known. So uh, the question is, what is the remaining question on the moduli space of vector bundles? So Han Moon, the main question. I, I, I think maybe I don't think this is just me. Did, did we lose your writing? Like it stopped writing. I think you've written more since. Pick M and um, then there's just okay. an R there. Let me check the connectivity. Um, I see your cursor. Yeah, we can see your mouse. Um, yeah, okay. Then let me stop my uh, screen sharing and, and try to reconnect again, okay? It seems that uh, my screen is also frozen. Can you see it now? Yeah, we're fine. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Ah, and this is really it, <laughs> the bad side of giving a Zoom talk. Uh, technical glitch. Okay, so in, I said uh, the topological invariants are well known. So the next question is more enhanced structure on the moduli space. So uh, today I want to talk about the structure of, of the uh, red category bounded the derived category of coherent shifts on the moduli space. 
Um, so that, uh, that I think now I need to clarify the question a little bit more. So what is the meaning that we want to understand the structure of the drive category? Um, so I think it would be better to recall the definition of the semi-orthogonal decomposition. So what we want to do is to decompose the derived category into smaller pieces so that they interwind in a systematic way. So a semi-orthogonal decomposition which it would be operated by SOD of any triangulated category, say T um, is a collection of uh, four subcategories, A1, A2, da, 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 AK, such that they uh, generate the triangulated category T. And each AI, okay, uh, so they are four triangulated subcategories of T. And they are in some sense orthogonal to each other. So if you take any object FI, from AI, then home from the, the object from the latter part to the previous part has to be always zero. We, we have a quick question from the audience, well, probably better if we ask, which is the answer, which is what is the theta? What's the generator of the Picard group? What is that theta you want to show? Um, okay, um, so uh, there are several ways to define the theta divisor, but um, so one way to define it is using the idea from Brillnet theory. So the, the dimension of the global section of the vector bundle is different from the, the general one. Does it make sense? Um, okay, thank you. So yeah, so the, 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 you may feel like the definition of SOD is slightly the uh, unnatural because the one direction of home is zero, but the other direction is uh, there is no condition error. Um, but and if we define the orthogonal decomposition, then any irreducible variety does not admit any orthogonal decomposition. So this is the best thing we can do. Um, okay, so then let me give one quick example. So suppose that we have a blow up of an algebraic variety V the smooth algebraic variety V along a smooth sub variety W, the exceptional divider is E, so this is in blow up. Then the dread category of the blown up space has a semi orthogonal decomposition. One component is the dread category of V, and the other uh, component is the isomorphic to okay, equivalent to the dread category of W, but there are many um, and copy of it. So here I is between negative one to negative co-dimension of W plus one, if I remember correctly. Okay. All right, so the, whenever we have a blow up, then the, we can cook up a new semi, in some sense, very nice semi-orthogonal decomposition. Um, but uh, more generally, Kawamata conjecture that a minimal model program induces a non-trivial semi-orthogonal decomposition in general. So in some sense, a semi-orthogonal decomposition encodes the uh, birational geometry of a uh, given variety. Of course, this is a still a big conjecture because the minimal model program naturally induces some singularities, but uh, then we need to think about the uh, <laughs> dread category. What is the appropriate right dread category of a singular variety? Um, along this direction, a, the, another very insightful conjecture is that if we have a variety without any semi-orthogonal decomposition, then that uh, has to be minimal uh, in the sense of uh, the minimal model program. Um, so if the canonical divider is enough, but uh, there is one condition, and uh, can, if the linear system of canonical divider is non-empty, then it is conjectured that the variety V uh, has no semi-orthogonal decomposition. The non-existence of semi-orthogonal decomposition is not uh, a, a numerical 
a condition in terms of the positivity or non-negativity of NEF divisor. If the net, even if NEF divisor is trivial or positive, but if there is no global section of NEF divisor and a linear system of NEF divisor, then it, uh, we do have an example that there exists a non-trivial semi-orthogonal closure. Okay, anyway. Um, so then let me rephrase my first question again. My question is now, I want to find a semi-orthogonal decomposition of the derived category of the marbleized space of vector bundles on the curve. Okay, and now let me pause here a little bit. Do you have any question so far? If you don't have any question, then please make a big smile. Well, so maybe this is, <laughs> yeah, Jim. maybe this is where you're headed, but these, the moduli spaces you're considering are not so far off from being Fano, right? Aren't they, are they like blow ups or blow downs of Fano it, varieties? It is a Fano variety of Picard number one. So in the sense of a minimal model program, this is uh, not minimal in the sense of a minimal model program, but uh, in other sense, this is really minimal. So, so hence I was thinking that you're expecting the answer to be that there is no non-trivial SOD, except the fact that this talk exists suggests that there will be. So now I'm kind of somewhat intrigued because you're right. So you're suggesting it's so minimal. It's, it's kind of, it looks to me like the space is, it should be, it's got to be minimal, right? I mean, uh, uh, and so there well, should we, be. Um, so well, uh, so I guess I'll find out. in the case of surface of general types, for instance, NEP divisor is positive. Then we expect that uh, uh, we have a very rare <laughs> possibility of semi orthogonal existence of non trivial semi orthogonal decomposition. But then in this case, the situation is completely opposite. Right. We have a final manifold. Right. Mm -hmm. so, right. Uh, so, like a PN or something has a semi-orthogonal decomposition, and then you you have to figure out what happens when you blow it up and blow it down. I think. Um, uh, yeah. The one, once we have a semi-orthogonal decomposition, then we can say uh, uh, something about the blown-up space. So, so basically, anytime, right? So we, uh, so because we, okay, we obviously are care about the normal model. So anytime we find a semi-orthogonal decomposition, that's all obviously very exciting because we're decomposing the geometry. And your question is, can you find some, frankly, unexpected, something I would, like, the audience would like to, I would find unexpected. I could, expected means I would say, oh, yes, of course. If there's this in it and there's that in it. And I can't see anything, obviously. So you're going to tell me something unexpected. Hence, that's cool. Is that right? That's the, uh, I guess I'll find out. Uh, that this sounds like you're going to tell me something cool. Or maybe you're, you're mm -hmm. not sure whether you're going to tell me something cool. Okay. Go ahead and tell me if there's no semi-orthogonal decomposition, uh, then I'll be sad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let me continue. Okay. Um. Okay. So then, then we do have uh, some conjectures, of course. Um. Thomas Gomez and Kim Song Lee, uh, they uh, have the following conjecture. So in the semi-orthogonal decomposition of this moduli space, uh, der derived category of moduli space, each block can be described by uh, using only uh, uh, two kinds of blocks and their product. Uh, one thing is the symmetric product of the base curve, xk, and the other one is the Jacobian of this. Mm -hmm. So if we uh, decompose, uh, more precisely, if we decompose the derived category of moduli space of vector bundles, then each uh, factor in the semi-orthogonal decomposition is isomorphic equivalent to the derived category of a product of um, a symmetric product in Jacobian of curve X. So in other words, the, the only contribution, everything can be described in terms of derived category of the curve. Uh, there is nothing else. So this is the general uh, conjecture. We have some evidences. The first one is um, uh, about 20 years ago, Del Bagno calculated the Chao motif. Uh, 
of the moduli space. And it really depends only on the motive of the base curve in the sense that by using the motive of a base curve and they are uh, some non-trivial combination and ref such motive, we can describe the mo uh, motive of a moduli space of vector bundles in the growth and wing. And another conjecture of Orlop says that if there is a fully spaceful embedding of the derived category of one variety to another variety, then it, it is conjectured that the tau motive of the variety V times the left set motive to the power must be a summand in the tau motive of uh, the ambient space W. So the, this conjecture does not provide any logical implementation, but the, the, in some sense that we can expect that, um, yeah, the, by combining these two results, we may expect that the, the, the dread criteria, the, the each block has to be, it could be described by these two uh, building blocks. And indeed, uh, Gomez and Kyung Sung Lee actually uh, calculated a very explicit motivic decomposition when the length is two and three. So they're based on this computation, we expect that uh, the category of moduli vector bundles can be decomposed into uh, these pieces. Is it, are you happy? I did okay. So, right. So, so your meaning of block, your word block means that you've got some at least partial decomposition into, so block is an informal used word at this point. I should think uh -huh. Oh, well, then I, I, I would explain it very soon. So I, I should say that each uh, uh, full triangulation subcategory in the semi, uh, appeared in the semi orthogonal decomposition. Uh, has to be decomposed, it has to be described as a product of a symmetric product and Jacobian. So, so and in, they are indeed, they does not admit, they do not admit any for the semi orthogonal decomposition. Okay, and then is there some order? The thing about semi orthogonal decompositions is they're not orthogonal, there's some mm -hmm. ordering of them. Are mm -hmm. you telling me what the ordering of those blocks is? is um, well, once we have a, a semi orthogonal decomposition of one particular order, then it, uh, there is a, a braid group action. So we can interchange the order, uh, non-trivially, but it is possible. The, the shape of each uh, block does not change. Great, great. Thank you for a great question. Okay, then uh, let me move to uh, part two. Uh, I want to say recent progress in rank two case. So, this is about Narashiman conjecture. So uh, Narashiman um, passed away a few months ago. They, in, in, in the past several years, the one of uh, the main project that he had been working on with Gyeong Song Lee was uh, the, about the derived category of a moduli space of vector bundles. So he had very explicit conjecture in the case of rank two. So this is a conjecture of Narashiman. And, and independently, um, Bermans and Garkin and Mukopadiai, uh, they uh, propose the same conjecture, which says that the derived category, uh, derived category of length two degree one vector bundles has the following semi orthogonal decomposition. So we have two copy of derived category of point. So this is simply a single object. Um, and derived category of uh, two copies of curves, derived category of two copies of symmetric product to that, 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 up to derived category of uh, symmetric product of G minus two copies of curve and 
there is one additional copy of G minus one symmetric product of the curve. Okay, so then we have a very explicit in the building blocks. So they, uh, they conjecture that that's it. Uh, this is the, the structure of the derived category of moduli <laughs> of length to vector vectors. Um, of course, there are some evidences. Well, one evidence is I already explained the motivic decomposition result of Gomez and Lee. There is another result why this is really plausible. The reason is in the case of rank two, we can apply uh, a word crossing picture of Tedious by using stable pairs. Um, so for the moduli space of link to vector bundles, and Tedious proved that we have the following construction. So start from 3G minus 3G minus 3 dimensional projective space. We have a the natural embedding of the curve X. So let's take the blow up along the curve X, then we have a space M1. Then now we can and construct the several flips, M2, that, 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 Mg minus one. And there is a, a birational subjective map, which is generalized, which is so called Abel, generalized Abel Jacob map. And in this picture, first of all, each M1, M2, that, 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 Mg minus one, they are moduli space of pairs. moduli of stable pairs, which is the set of vector bundles, link to vector bundles with one extra section. And where in this case, we can define many different stability conditions. So M1, M2, that, that, that they depend on the stability condition. If we provide stability condition, then we they have a, a non-trivial flip in general. And in each flip, is a flip over a projective bundle of the symmetric product of a curve. So now yeah, you can see that where the derived of the derived category of a curve is embedded, where the derived category of symmetric product has to be embedded. So there, this picture okay, was well known. Um, so that this is another reason why an Arashiman conjecture is very plausible. Um, so there, there had been an, I mean, a few progress since uh, until last year, but uh, this summer there has been very <laughs> an, an explosion of the recent wizard. The first one that I want to introduce is that when the number k is less than genus minus one, then actually the derived category of the symmetric product XK, which exact, uh, appears exactly on the decomposition, uh, the conjectural decomposition of the moduli space, it does not admit any non-trivial semi-orthogonal decomposition. So the derived category of symmetric product that appears on this picture, they are uh, indecomposable. So they so, are so really so this is, it X is a, okay, so you had a curve mm -hmm. and you might wonder whether if the curve is special in some way, whether there would suddenly become one. But you're saying no matter what, no uh, hyperelliptic, you name it, there's still sure. no. Yeah, okay. so in that sense, this is really surprising. I mean, uh, the geometry of curve may be very complicated because of a brilliant, I mean, brilliant theory, you know, the hyperelliptic, gonality in general. But it doesn't matter. In any case, when, when, whenever we take a, a symmetric product up to G minus one, <laughs> the derived category is indecomposable. But when K is exactly G, then it is decomposable because we, we can construct a Abel Jacob map. Right, it is a result of many people starting from Okawa, he proved that uh, the derived category of Kobe is always indecomposable. And this was Gomez, Lee, Bastianelli, Bermans, uh, Licorfi, and 
very recently Sun Lin uh, in July, okay, he proved that uh, uh, the last part of this, <laughs> the result. So uh, it, uh, it is independent from the gonality or whatever. There are many people. Um, after that, I would like to say that this is not classical anymore. <laughs> Zenia, Tebelef, and Sebastian Torres posted a preprint on archive on August 26th. So this is, <laughs> you know, less than a month. Um, they proved that actually these components appear on the semi orthogonal decomposition of the drive category of the moduli space. In the sense that if we denote this semi orthogonal decomposition as A, then it, and they prove that the drive category of moduli space has the semi orthogonal decomposition and plus possibly some extra. <laughs> Right, also on a complement. Okay. So, should we think of things with no semi-orthogonal decomposition as something? I want to, as something akin to simple objects that they either, whenever you, whenever you have a morphism, either they survive in their entirety or they die, for example. And so, when you're following them through the Thaddeus flips, you just want to make sure they live at every stage. And that's the is that the kind of game that's played? Like, what's the is that the kind of game you play in a um, yeah, I would, my plan is to briefly explain okay, the, uh, what kind of compu computation we need to do. Uh, but uh, the basic idea is that where, where we are going to uh, describe an explicit free Mukai transform and to make a fully spaceful embedding. And after that, as you said, we need to show that the home from one object to uh, one object from another one is <laughs> zero. So uh, eventually it would be related to uh, the computation of a lot of cohomology benefit. Great, As a, okay, great. So it's like a it's like a Schur's lemma, but in a much richer context. You turn it into mm -hmm. Schur's lemma, like a vanishing cohomology or mm -hmm. a much richer version of a Schur's. Okay, I have to say, okay, good, okay. Is there some relation between, for example, not having a semi-orthogonal decomposition and being general type? Somehow in my brain, those are kind of connected, but maybe that's not the right way to think. Um, not necessarily. I mean, um, so even in the case in the case of surface of general type, uh, we do have many examples that uh, the variety of the semi-orthogonal, non-trivial semi-orthogonal decomposition. Mm -hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. What's an is there? An, what's an example of a surface with a, like of a general type surface with a semi-orthogonal decomposition? Uh, well, there are many, but uh, for instance, suppose that we have a surface surface of general type uh, with uh, ir, uh, zero trivial irregularity and H two of the uh, structure shift is zero. Then uh, one thing we can easily check is that any line bundle is exceptional. So the uh, sub mm -hmm. Uh, sub uh, triangulated category generated by that, that line bundle is already a one component of non trivial semi orthogonal decomposition. So, indeed, many, huh. uh, many examples of surface of general type with non trivial semi orthogonal decomposition can be constructed in that way. Uh, by okay, you, thank you. Sub category generated by line bundle. Okay. Um, so uh, Tabelef Torres proved this statement uh, by analyzing uh, the world crossing of stable pair I explained before. Mm -hmm. And four days later, uh, another paper was posted on archive which is uh, written by Harvard School, Kai Su and Sing Sung Yao on August 30th. They obtained the same result, but with a completely different approach. So then they studied the drive category of steps. 
the derived category of the stack of all vector bundles and not stable one. And then they then try to eliminate the uh, uh, unstable part by using uh, theta, stratif uh, theta strati uh, stratification idea. Okay, so good. But now I would like to say that so uh, this is not the full resolution of an Arashman conjecture because we still have the extra uh, orthogonal complement P here. But uh, conjecturally, we believe that um, P has to be zero. So this, and this is the uh, semi-orthogonal decomposition, but uh, it, it does require some extra effort you know, to prove it. And, and somehow this P is somehow cohomologically invisible. You've identified all. True. Uh, if it's non trivial, then it has to be a phantom. Right. Phantom means like somehow that. I don't and, know what. Uh, Cockshire, the homology is trivial. Gross and ring, uh, ring is trivial. Everything is trivial. Okay. Um, so it was a really uh, impressive and exciting development. So, so actually, at this point, if you want to prove that, the only way to prove this, I guess, for the conjecture is now you know what the building blocks are, you basically have to just build it, right? I mean, that's the, and show that there's nothing else. Uh, but I would have thought that the original statement, of, now I've forgotten, the names are off the top of the page, of, uh, of um, was by building. Like, did they not build, did they not build the um, moduli space of bundles out of these pieces? And uh, is it, this is a vague question. Uh, was it Munoz or I can't remember who's the person who did this. Like, uh, did they not build the moduli of, of, of vector bundles out of symmetric powers of curves and by gluing things? And then you have to just, is this now become a potentially trackable question now that you said that everything that comes from one of these pieces is now accounted for? And you just need to show that nothing else is out there is missing. Um. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not quite sure if I understand your question. Maybe right? for my question right. Yeah, I, I mean, so the, because, the, you know, any kind of additive invariant we can expect, they cannot detect a phantom. So uh, it is really unclear. I mean, I they honestly don't have any idea how to approach this question. Maybe Gyeongso has. Uh, Gyeongso, uh, uh, do you have any idea how to approach <laughs> this, uh, this kind of question in general. That's a lot of pressure to put on your co <laughs> I will. I mean, yeah. So, for example, one can try to construct every skyscraper shape from those pieces to uh, show that this is full, or maybe, you know, you know something like ample sequence. One can try to construct ample sequence from those collections. Yeah, uh, there are various ways, but Technically, it's a little difficult, I think. But anyway, but you can no. get, if, you, if you get the, if you can generate the generators, you have everything. That's the yeah. So, well, but you're saying that so uh, it, it's the the issue isn't that the strategy can't make sense. It's that executing it seems impossible. Not really, just, it seems so far beyond the capability that we have. Right, and the one more direction is maybe one can try to construct something like a balance and sequence in dia or resolution of diagonal for this case. But I mean, yeah, I, I think, yeah, there are several ways, but I, I don't, yeah, one should try and yeah, look at what will happen. So at the rate things are doing or moving, that means this will be proved next week, probably. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. And can I send, say one more thing, Indy? So, I mean, so, in Jim, I think Jim's question, he told us that whether this uh, existence of semi orthogonal decomposition related to general time. So I think uh, general expectation is that when K is very ample, I mean, it has been more many sections, then it tends to be there is no semi orthogonal decomposition. For example, only examples of semi orthogonal decomposition constructed in general type all has PG is zero, PG equal Q equal zero for surface K. So if K is more and more ample, then there's less chance that this has a semi orthogonal decomposition. And when Kx is ample, but I mean, ha having a few section, then yeah, there's some chance that it might have a semi orthogonal decomposition. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's helpful. Actually, maybe a follow up to that is why is that was that an empirical statement that the examples seem to be of this form or and that or why why is it that lots of sections of the canonical seem to so I mean so so far all loan result about existence of semiosonic compression I mean before soon's result the, the typical way of proving non-existence of semiosonic compression is to prove the base low cost of canonical divisor of the variety is uh, something like finite set or empty set. So it means that I have more section on canonical divisor than it has the chance of base low cost having small dimension is high. So yeah, that, that explains yeah, yeah, why. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, another one comment I can add here is that uh, once we have a, a section of canonical divisor, then uh, a semi orthogonal decomposition, by, by, because of serial duality, a semi orthogonal decomposition has to be an orthogonal decomposition. Mm -hmm. But uh, we already know that uh, any reusable variety does not admit an orthogonal decomposition. So, so that, uh, that, that's a general um, that starting point. Okay, um, yeah, then let's move to the general case. So, so far I haven't uh, introduced the, uh, uh, my result, um, but so th we are interested in another direction. Instead of going to the rank two case, we are interested in the general uh, direction of arbitrary rank R. Uh, of course, this is a very challenging project. So that well, we are going to work in uh, maybe next 10 years, who knows? Um, but um, so this is the initial step. Um, when on archive, I, I guess it, it was posted on June. Um, so again, suppose the rank and the determinant degree is co-prime. Then for arbitrary rank R, arbitrary degree D, we could prove that the derived category of the first non-trivial building block, the derived category of the curve can be embedded into the derived category of the model like space of vector bundle. Okay. Um, so uh, let me briefly provide an outline and history of this pro uh, problem. So if we want to, uh, and prove that the derived category of one variety is embedded into the derived category of another variety, then we need to construct a free MOCAI transform. So in our situation, we have curve and the uh, moduli space, and we can take the product of it, product of them. Then where there is a Poincare bundle, the universal bundle of the moduli space, Well, then we may define the pre mokai transform from the derived category of X to the derived category of the moduli space defined by take any object and take the pullback, answering with E, the Poincare bundle, and take the push forward. Well, uh, all of the functors are derived ones. Anyway, so we can define a nature functor. Then what we want to do is this is a fully faithful. Then what the technique we, we can apply is Bondar or criteria. Which says that the free MOCAI transform is an embedding. If and only if we can check the, just the spanning classes like the structure ship that supported at each closed point for any x, y in x, what we need to show is the following banishing and non-banishing condition. Hum of image of kx and image of ky shifted by i has to be either, that there is exactly one in case that trivially this is non-zero, which is x equals y, and i is zero, 
in that case, it has to be one dimension. And other than when x is not equal to y, or if i is greater than the dimension of x, which is one in our situation, it has to be zero. So it really depends on a lot of vanishing of you know, cohomology. But because our free Mokai transform is defined by using Frank-Ari bundle, so then this is equal to, you can check it quickly, uh, EX is the restricted Frank-Ari bundle. Uh, we have a vector bundle on X cross X uh, and the moduli space. Just uh, they restrict the, the vector bundle to a closed point cross moduli space. And then this is a vector bundle on the moduli space. Um, then this cohomology has to be vanished. And in terms of classical shift cohomology, this is on the moduli space, we need to check that EX dual tends to EY has to be zero in most cases. Um, yeah, so the, the, this vanishing is what we want to prove. So, so, so can I, this is a slight sideways question, but at the mm -hmm. start you had the, you required the rank and degree to be relatively prime. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, and uh, so if you remove that, mm -hmm. you, you might as well, and I, maybe I'm thinking, I didn't, I don't know what Yao and Chu's paper is like. So you take all bundles, don't worry about them being stable. Uh, and so then you lose, so okay, then you have a nice space, but now you needed properness and the query Mukai involved this, you know, pulling back is no problem, but the pushing forward becomes a problem. But you should still expect to have hope to be able to define a Fourier Mukai like statement where you have, you solve a point gray bundle, you pull back, mm -hmm. and the pull push forward. I don't know if it's a good moduli space morphism if you restrict appropriately. You should, you should still be able to make sense of that. So is that is that a is that a sensible? Yeah, I, I think it is plausible. Honestly, I haven't thought about along that direction. Um, but uh, yeah, great. Sure. Um, okay. Um, yes, yeah, sure. Okay. If you're using the stack and you push forward to the stack, wouldn't that, that would be proper. You, this would make sense. The Fourier Mukai would make sense on the, on the stack in the non-co-prime case, I think. Mm -hmm. Except I think the push forward from the, 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 when you push forward, that's not a proper map. So I don't know, you need, the, you need that to be, to push forward coherence to coherence. Uh, and so, or you see, there's something that you. You think that's not proper if you're using the full, if you're using the stack? I, well, okay. It's Sorry. not proper. It's not proper in the traditional sense, in the usual sense, but it may be proper in the uh, Jared Alper esque sense, perhaps. Okay. So, yeah, I'm glad to. I mean, I'm, I'm semi sorry to interrupt, except this is interesting. So you're making you're making people think interesting things. So I'm not too sorry, but thanks. Keep telling us more interesting things. Sorry. And then that's fine. You, you are making then this to more interesting and exciting. <laughs> okay. Um. So uh, some history. Um. So uh, this statement of the embedding of curve, the right category of curve, was proved by Narasimhan first. Uh, when rank two case. And for arbitrary rank, but degree is one and uh, there is a non-trivial genus bound. Uh, in this case, it was approved by Berman and Mukopadiai. Uh, they applied the Hecke correspondence. So the, what we want is to do is to generalize this statement in two different directions. First of all, we want to remove the uh, genus, uh, non-trivial genus condition. And secondly, we want to uh, extend this idea to arbitrary degree case. Um, so the, the obstacle for arbitrary co-prime degree case is that we do not have any uh, uh, well-defined Hecke correspondence anymore. But the key ingredient in our approach is the moduli space of parabolic bundles. Uh, 
Um, so that, because we don't have enough time, this, and then I would not introduce what the parabolic bundle is, but this is a vector bundle plus some extra data, uh, depending on a choice of a finitely many distinct points on the curve. And for each curve, we are going to attach, we are going to attach a sub vector space of five of the vector bundle. Mm -hmm. So they just tag the moduli space of parabolic vector bundles it's the uh, product of a Grassmannian vibration of the moduli tag of vector bundles. Okay. Um, so, first of all, it, it really depends on the choice of uh, stability. In the case of a moduli of vector bundles, there is a canonical choice of the stability condition. But here, it depends on some numerical data. So, we can imagine the moduli space of a stable and parabolic bundles. Then the observation is that the moduli space of a parabolic victim bundles behaves very well in many different uh, in many different contexts. So then my slogan is the following. So that because it depends on the choice of stability condition, we can imagine the wall crossing phenomenon. And so uh, there are uh, two different uh, moduli spaces are connected by several flips and blow ups and blow downs. But this wall crossing picture is equal to uh, the minimal model program, the Morris program in general. And it is, it can be described variation of GIT as well. So they, they are saying, so in the sense that if you have a moduli space with a large Picard number, then you may try to construct a lot of birational models by using wall crossing. But in the case of a moduli of parabolic bundles, we can say more. All rational contractions, including all flips, all blowdowns, all composition of them, all of them can be described in terms of a moduli of a parabolic, a parabolic bundle, and possibly the uh, degeneration which will be called the generalized Hecke correspondence, okay? Um, well, so, and here is step three. So the, we need to compute the cohomology, vanishing of cohomology of EX tensor, EX dual tensor EY. So, the, the observation is that this is equal to HI of the projective bundle, fiber product of a projective bundle. And on this the the, fiber product, well, just to take a line bundle O11. Right? I think, did the writing stop again? Ah. Uh, or maybe that's just me this time, if no one else oh, is speaking. Okay, let, me let, me, let me give it a second. All right. I don't know why. Okay, still it doesn't work. Um. Well, this time I don't see your screen, so <laughs> that's a more serious issue maybe. Okay, awesome. Okay. Perfect, yeah, I see it, thank you. All right, <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, by using the the uh, general spectral sequence idea, then we can check that these two cohomology groups are same. But the point is that um, and this fiber product of a projective bundles is equal to the moduli space of a parabolic bundles with some very small, small parabolic data. Mm -hmm. So then we can interpret the cohomology banishing to the cohomology banishing over moduli space over parabolic bundles. And then we are going to apply the wall crossing. Then the moduli space over parabolic vector bundles with some different parabolic weight data. Over here, the banishing can be easily shown by using Kalmata with banishing. So we need to connect these two cohomology groups uh, connected by wall crossing. 
But as I told you before, all of the wall crossings in the, the moduli of carbonyl vector bundles are connected by the variation of GIT. We can apply the, the variation of GIT and derive the category the result by Harpen and Reist, Harp and Reist now, and Ballard, Fabero, and Kurtzkopf. So the, the, let me just uh, state their uh, the result in the simple case. T by Arpen Reisner, which says that, um, so he proved many results, but then this is the part we are going to use. Whenever we have a variation of GIT, um, so here is one side of the GIT quotient, here is the other side of the GIT quotient. And suppose that there is a non-trivial uh, uh, quotient stick on the wall. Then these cohomology groups are, are in general not identified to each other, but it is possible that uh, the cohomology group on the left-hand side is equal to the cohomology group on the right-hand side. For arbitrary i, the condition is that we need to compute the weight of the complex F on the strictly semi-stable locus. Well, the, uh, the question how is a completely different question, but suppose that we can calculate the, the weight uh, the condition is that if the weight of the complex F on the strictly semi-stable locus is not too big, so, uh, the window can be uh, calculated exactly by computing the, the weight of the, the normal bundle uh, on the strictly semi-stable locus. So this is, in many cases, it is a computable uh, the size of a window is computable, but um, so that what I want to say is that if the weight of the you know, given line bundle, vector bundle, or complex more generally is not uh, too big in the sense, then the cohomology can be identified, so then we can prove the vanishing result. Okay. All right. So uh, this is one result that we could prove regarding the drive category of the the moduli of vector bundles. We proved that, that for arbitrary rank R, at least we can say that the derived category of X can be embedded into the uh, derived category of the moduli space. Around the, I mean, uh, during proving this statement, we observed that uh, we can uh, find another interesting application of the existence of ACM bundles. Um, I, uh, because this is a completely new uh, direction, I think it would be better to uh, give a brief uh, the introduction of the definition. Suppose that we have an n-dimensional uh, smooth projective variety embedded by uh, the very ample line bundle O1, and a vector bundle E on the variety V is called ACM, which is arithmetic uh, in Cohen Macaulay. If uh, the all of the twisted middle cohomology groups are vanishing, and then this cohomology is zero for every i between zero and n, and for any m, uh, for any integer m. So this is a very strong cohomology vanishing condition. So that there are several reasons why these kinds of ACM bundles are interesting. One reason is a classical Horrocks theorem. Uh, and there is a correspondence be between ACM bundles and maximum cohen macaulay model in, in commutative algebra, et cetera. So people are interested in the existence of ACM bundles and how many. So the A variety V is called a wild representation type. If the dimension of the moduli of indecomposable 
uh, ACM bundles is infinity. So for any <laughs> large K, we can find a K dimensional a non-trivial family of ACM bundles. So, so is the um, is this notion? This notion depends on the embedding on the choice of variables. That's right. Yes. So the, it has to be a, a, a projectively embedded variety. Um, so the examples are when the uh, genus of curve is at least two, then it is known that um, it is a, a wild representation type, cubic surface, and in most case of grass mania. The projective space is that. Um, uh, during the, uh, this kind of computation, we could prove that the moduli space of vector bundles is on, uh, it's also one of the interesting collection of variety, final varieties of wild representation. And the, the, the sketch is really simple. I mean, it, we can take the 2K different points on the curve and let's just think about um, dual of the Fuencare bundle, restricted Fuencare bundles, you know, K copy of it, and K, another K copy of restricted Fuencare bundles. Then they, they are always easy. So uh, the, the general idea of the proof is really yeah, similar. And essentially, this is about the vanishing of a lot of non-trivial cohomologies. So we can apply the same idea, moduli of parabolic bundles and wall crossing, and and the you know comparison of the derived category and the cohomology of the Okay, so I I think the time is already up. So I'm gonna stop here. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thanks for getting on mute yourself. So thank you.